This video shows you the must-see NBA moments from 2020. It was an emotional year for the league filled with shocking unforeseen circumstances, and when the league returned on July 30th, the empty bubble environment made it feel like another universe at times. But amidst a ton of distractions surrounding them off the court, pre- and post-suspension, the performances from these teams and players you're about to see were utterly inspiring, so stay tuned to see which moments the best from this past year. If you're already subscribed, welcome back to D-Flow Hoops. If you're new here and a basketball fan interested in NBA rankings, predictions, and stories, welcome aboard. You came to the right place. Please subscribe and click notifications so you get notified every time I post new content which is at least twice a week. Shout out goes to Ona, who says that out of anyone in the draft, LaMelo has the most potential, going on to give Ball a Penny Hardaway ceiling. Great answer. The Speaks board resets at the end of the year, and the top five get yearly giveaways. The question's coming up for next video. Shout out. Appreciate you. Toronto trailed 83-53 with 2.55 remaining in the third quarter to Dallas with Luka Doncic out with an injury. The Raptors were damn short-handed themselves, though, as they were missing Pascal Siakam, Norman Powell, Marcus Gasol, and Matt Thomas. But Toronto's head coach Nick Nurse found a combination of players that worked out, with Kyle Lowry surrounded by four bench players clamping the doncic -less Mavs. From traps at half court to relentless defensive rotations, Dallas was completely stunned. Meanwhile, on offense, Toronto's all-star point guard dropped 32 points and 10 dimes while turning the ball over just one time in the game. The Raptors' comeback was the fifth largest in league history, and their elite depth was on full display in this one as the third-string center Chris Boucher dropped a career-high 21 points and Rondé Hollis-Jefferson added 18 points. And you have to look at the plus-minus stats in the game from the Raps bench. Terrence Davis, most notably, was a plus 31. But this run by the Raptors just goes to show that you can never stop competing in basketball until the clock runs out. Because if the team trailing finds its rhythm on both ends, anything is possible. In the first battle of New York City, the Brooklyn Nets came out victorious over the New York Knicks after Kyrie Irving drilled a game-winning three-pointer over the outstretched arm of RJ Barrett with 22.4 seconds left. On this instance, the rookie RJ was certainly taught a lesson to press up on Kyrie, and was taken to school. In general though, you can get used to these types of daggers from Kyrie in 2021, especially with the space he'll have with a former scoring champ in Kevin Durant returning to the lineup. James Harden of the Houston Rockets shot into basketball history this past season when he scored 54 points against the Orlando Magic, becoming the first player in NBA history to record back-to-back 50-point -back games with 10 or more three-pointers. Shockingly in those two games, James only attempted 11 free throws, but from the three-point line, he combined to shoot 20 of 33, and from the field, he shot 39 of 65. That's a two-game scoring spree that you won't see again for a very long time, just a masterful display of deep-range daggery from the beard. With the Bulls down five against the Hornets with under 10 seconds left in the game, Thomas Sadoransky gets Miles Bridges to fly by with a pump fake and hits a three-pointer. But the biggest mistake from a Hornets player came from either Terry Rozier or Devontae Graham, depending on how you look at it. First, Terry throws the inbound pass to Devontae Graham, who's trapped by three Bulls players and stripped by Ryan Archidiakono. And to Hornet fans' horror, the ball ends up in the hands of a 25-point-per-game scorer in Zach Levine, who dribbles back to the three-point line and fades away to nail the bomb, giving Chicago a one-point lead with .8 seconds left in a dramatic Bulls victory. You'll see more about the Suns' miracle run in the bubble, but in Phoenix's third game with the game tied at 1.15 in the dying seconds, D-Book bumped off Paul George, got doubled by Alex Len, drove to the basket only to get doubled for a second time, drawing the attention of Kawhi and forced to pick up his dribble, but then Booker holds his left pivot foot, spinning around to drain a game-winning dagger in the face of two elite defenders. More on the Suns coming up, but that was an insane shot. Pelicans rookie Zion Williamson became the first player in league history to shoot four for four or better from three-point range in his NBA debut. In only 18 minutes, 
The former Duke Phenom posted 22 points, 7 boards, and 3 dimes for the Pelicans. Zion should be a star for a very long time, as his 285 pound frame and beastly hops in addition to that make him a problem to defend. But in his debut, it was his 3 point shooting which was the most impressive, and if Zion can stay consistent with that deep range stroke, then he'd be utterly unstoppable. About a week before the league suspension, which depressed us all, the Celtics crowd was given one last amazing moment to watch. You often see teams attempt to miss on purpose down the stretch in order to get the ball back, but it almost never works. With the Celtics down three here though, Tatum intentionally missed, Harden nearly comes up with it, but the ball finds the hands of Jalen Brown and JB miraculously sends the game to OT with the crowd exploding. In an emotional moment at Staples in the Lakers' first home game since Kobe's death, LeBron James addressed the crowd saying, quote unquote, at some point we'll have a memorial for Kobe, but I look at this as a celebration tonight. This is a celebration of the 20 years of the blood, the sweat, the tears, the broken down body, the determination to be as great as he could be. Tonight we celebrate the kid who came here at 18 years of age, retired at 38, and became probably the best dad we've ever seen over the last three years. In the words of Kobe Bryant, Mamba out, but in the words of us, not forgotten, live on brother. Entering the Orlando bubble for the NBA restart, the Blazers were four games back of the eighth seeded Grizzlies. Given there were only eight games of the season left, most counted them out, certainly I did. But then Dame time happened. In the seeding games, Lillard averaged a league high 37.6 points to go along with 9.6 assists and 4.3 boards in more than 40 minutes per game. In the Blazers' last three regular season games, Lillard scored 154 points combined against the 76ers, Mavs, and Nets to will Portland into the play-in game and was the bubble MVP. Now for what you may be clicked on this video for, the Bubble Suns, who were unfortunately forgotten about after an insane 2020 playoffs, which I'm about to tell you about. But in unprecedented circumstances, Devin Booker averaged 30.5 points per game, 6 assists, 4.9 boards in 33 minutes, with a true shooting percentage of 62.7. D-Book was also plus 86 in the Suns' eight seeding games, and that superstar production from Booker, combined with steady contributions from Ricky Rubio, Cam Johnson, Mikal Bridges, and DeAndre Ayton, led the Suns to an 8-0 record in the bubble. Even though they didn't reach the playoffs, Phoenix proved they're going to be a problem in 2021, especially considering now that they traded for Chris Paul. A fourth consecutive down-to-the-wire finish, a fourth consecutive win for the Portland Trailblazers in the first ever NBA play-in tournament game, which worked out so well that the league decided to bring it back for 2021. Damian Lillard scored 30 points, CJ McCollum had 14 of his 29 in the fourth, including a pair of big jumpers over John Morant late in the game, and the Blazers clinched the NBA's final playoff spot by beating the Memphis Grizzlies 126 to 122. Morant scored 35 for Memphis, but the loss of Jaron Jackson was way too much to overcome for them, and Portland advanced to the first round of the playoffs where they'd lose in five games against the Lakers. The Slovenian sensation Luka Doncic left everyone speechless in Game 4 against the Clippers. The Mavericks, who trailed by as many as 21 points in the contest, came alive in the second half and overtime of Game 4 to tie the series at two games apiece. The LA Clippers held a one-point lead with 3.7 seconds remaining in overtime before Doncic crossed up Reggie Jackson and drained a once-in-a-lifetime step-back game winner at the Horn. Luka was later welcomed to the locker room by his teammates with a celebratory water soaking in his fourth postseason game ever. Doncic finished with a stat line of 43 points, 17 boards, and 13 dimes in 46 minutes, his second straight playoff triple-double. After the game, Luka called his game winner, quote-unquote, one of the best feelings I've ever had as a player, and it certainly gave everyone watching one of the best feelings we've ever had as fans. The persistent will to win and heart shown off by the 21-year-old superstar to fight through a gruesome ankle injury and put up this kind of performance was damn special. Historically, teams are 13 and 244 when falling behind 3-1 in a playoff series. 
But there's impossible, and then there's the feat that the Denver Nuggets pulled off in the 2020 playoffs. Denver became the first team to come back from a 3-1 deficit twice in the same postseason. They knocked off the Utah Jazz by winning three straight games and did it again the next series against the LA Clippers in the Western Conference semifinals. Coach Mike Malone said after the Nuggets stunned the Clippers, quote unquote, I think people out there probably think this is exactly where we want them. It's not. We would much rather be up 3-1, but it is what it is. Even though the Lakers took care of them in the next series when they went up 3-1, what the 2020 Nuggets did is something us fans will never forget. Jamal Murray and Donovan Mitchell joined Allen Iverson as the only players in NBA history to drop 50 points twice in one playoff series. But Murray and Mitchell did it in the same series facing each other in a duel for the ages. They went back and forth in a mesmerizing battle and the two also joined Iverson, Jordan, and Chamberlain as the only five players in NBA history with two 50-point games in one single postseason. The Raptors were out of luck when Kemba Walker dumped it off to Daniel Tice on the other end to give the Celts a two-point edge with .5 seconds left. The Celtics were on the verge of going up 3-0, but after Toronto called timeout to advance the ball up, Lowry whipped an inbound pass from the other side of the court to find OG Ananobi in the corner who barely let it go and it dropped home. Debatably, one of the best game winners of the year, one that helped Toronto push this series to seven games against the Celtics. In a shocking display, the Milwaukee Bucks displayed their commitment to social justice by refusing to play game five of their series against the Orlando Magic. This was due to the police shooting of Jacob Blake and was an unprecedented moment in sports history. From the moment Bam Adebayo's clutch block against Jason Tatum happened at the end of Game 1 of the Eastern Conference Finals, it was clear it would become one of the most iconic plays of this past postseason and one of the most iconic plays in recent memory. In addition to the in-game impact it had for the Heat, Adebayo stopped Boston's best player from tying the game in overtime with less than five seconds remaining. And unsurprisingly, this play had quite a physical impact on the Miami Heat player too. In an interview that aired on ESPN's The Jump, host Rachel Nichols asked what it took physically for Adebayo to make such a play with his offhand. Bam said, quote unquote, well, two of my fingers actually went numb. It was just like a big clap and two of my fingers went numb. So Adebayo paid the price, but pulled off a brilliant highlight on Miami's path to a finals appearance. With starters Bam Adebayo and Goran Dragic out again for Game 3 of the finals, the weight of keeping the Heat within reach of a fourth franchise title fell to Jimmy Butler, and Butler delivered again and again. By the time the final ticks flipped off the game clock, Butler had racked up 40 points, 11 rebounds, and 13 assists. Just the third 40-point triple-double in finals history, he joined Jerry West, who did it in 1969, and LeBron James, who did it in 2015, as the only players to do so. Butler shot 14 of 20, which is 70% from the field, and 12 of 14, an 85.7% clip from the line. Jimmy proved himself as a surefire top 10 player in these playoffs. LeBron made must-see chase-down blocks all playoffs long. Anthony Davis hit a generationally great game winner and yelled Kobe after hitting the shot, saying after the game, quote-unquote, I just want to take these shots. It's part of the legacy. I want those shots. I want the big-time plays. It was shots like this from AD that allowed the Lakers to seamlessly roll through the playoffs and secure the franchise's 17th NBA championship. The question for next video shoutout is, what's your favorite moment from this past year? Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at dflowhoops. Links are in the description for both those platforms where you can keep up with the channel. That's at dflowhoops. As always, this was dflow. Have a great day, and I'll see you next video.